Uh, okay. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I uh, am going to talk about uh, a personal project of mine called Schema. But first, I'm going to say a few words about me. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Seyman. I'm a sysadmin by trade. So when I, I don't do a lot of coding, but when I do, I prefer it be Perl. And it usually comes out as a Python. Uh, I live in uh, Paris, so I'm a member of the Paris Perlmonger Manga Group. I'm a member of uh, Parinux, the Paris Linux user group. And uh, I'm an occasional contributor to Bugzilla. <coughs> Does everybody know what Bugzilla is? If you do not know what Bugzilla is, you are in the wrong talk. So, uh, a, f a few years ago, I w contributed to Bugzilla a lot more than I do now. And there was uh, one uh, website that I found very useful, which is the one that I have, uh, the, uh, the one with the URL behind me. And this is a web application that will allow you to choose a version of Bugzilla, click Submit, and get a web page that documents the schema of the database that that version of Bugzilla uses. So you get a list of every single table. Uh, for every single table, you get all the columns, you get all the column types, and uh, additional information. And I found this uh, useful. I kept coming back to it back and back, uh, time and time again. <coughs> Uh, so this was useful, but it had a few problems uh, to go along with it. Uh, the first one is that it and uh, there was no uh, there was uh, no possibility to reuse code from Bugzilla in Bugzilla schema, and it it was just a, a waste of op opportunity. Um, <coughs> more importantly, uh, Ravenbrook, the company that was behind uh, Bugzilla schema, sc stopped supporting it because it, uh, they didn't have a, a business model for it. So they stopped uh, adding versions of Bugzilla in 2009, which means that the last version of uh, Bugzilla for which you can get the documentation for the database schema is 3.4.2. To give you an idea, we're now on 5.0.3, and there's an unstable version called, uh, numbered 5.1.1, which is out. So the, all of this is uh, old and no longer very useful. Uh, to top it all off, <coughs> I've copy-pasted uh, some words, uh, a sentence from the README. The code was written uh, was written in a ad hoc uh, manner. Adding a version of Bugzilla is uh, relatively complex. It requires you to um, add that version of Bugzilla in four separate uh, locations in the code, and that's if there are no changes between in the Bugzilla sc in the database schema between that version and the version that immediately precedes it. So this is a pain in the backside, which is why they stopped maintaining it actually. Uh, so. Problems. Thankfully, they all have solutions. The solution to the fact that it's written in Python is simply to port it to Perl. <coughs> uh, they actually uploaded to the code to GitHub uh, a few years back, saying uh, you can fork this if, if you want. So I did. Um, Adding, adding a version of Bugzilla is uh, complex, so let's try and make it as simple as possible. Uh, ideally, you'll have, you'll have a, a data structure that contains all the versions of Bugzilla, and when you want to add a new version, you'll simply add one entry to that data structure and be done with it. Uh, code is hard to maintain. Well, that 
the solution solution to that one is writing as little code as possible. And in Perl speak, that means using CPAN as much as possible. So these are the guiding principles that I started with. Um, the last one, use CPAN as much as possible. So I went looking on CPAN <coughs> to see what uh, modules I, I could use. Uh, I, I needed a way to talk to databases and get the, the schema out of them. Um, there's not a whole lot of uh, choice on CPAN for that. There's really only one, which is DBIX uh, class which does an incredible amount of, of stuff, but uh, also includes uh, a module that's called DBIX class schema, which abstracts the schema from a database and converts it to poor code. So I thought, hey, this is useful. Let's see what uh, this does. Uh, DBIX class has a whole uh, number of extensions that are also on CPAN. One of these is uh, DBIX, DBICX Autodoc, which takes a, a schema object and conver converts it to HTML uh, using template toolkit. And I thought, hmm, that might be useful. Let's keep it. Uh, and once I had this, I could uh, talk, to, talk to database schemas and write HTML. So now I needed a way to, to write a dynamic uh, website. <coughs> Here, uh, I started looking through C10, then gave up, because after 50 possibilities, I was drowning in, in choices. Um, there are an incredible number of uh, ways you can write dynamic websites in Pro uh, using modules on CPAN. Um, I toyed with uh, the big three, Catalyst, uh, Dancer2, Mojolicious, uh, and realized that they all rely on Plaque. They're all Plaque app, app applications at heart. So I decided to uh, not use any of them and just write to Plaque, write a Plaque application directly. In hindsight, this probably wasn't a good idea, and I should have stuck with Mojolicious or Dancer2. But hey, it is what it is. So, <coughs> uh, first, uh, first thing to do, write a proof of concept. DBICX, uh, DBIX class comes with a Perl script called DBIC dump. This will connect to a database, extract the schema, and uh, write the schema object uh, on, on file. So, hey, sounds like something that's useful. So this is the command line I wrote. And I had uh, a schema object uh, on file. Then I looked at the DBIX Autodoc, and DBIX Autodoc comes with um, uh, a Perl script that <laughs> is called DBICX Autodoc, which takes a, a schema object on, on file and uh, writes the HTML page that uh, documents it. So I wrote this command line, and uh, I had uh, an HTML page that documents the schema that is used by Bugzilla 503. So I was pretty excited about this. I mean, I had written two lines of code, which is one line of code more than I'm used to, do, to doing in Pro, but never mind. And uh, I had a, a proof of concept. So I uploaded it to one of my servers, uh, hopped onto the Bugzilla IRC channel, and asked the Bugzilla developers if they found it interesting. And this is the only... Uh, this is the only response I got. Uh, this is uh, Jerv, uh, Jerv Merkham, here. <laughs> Who basically summed it up by, uh, with I always thought it was great from a technical point of view, but I never really could understand why, who would find it useful. And when I realized that this was the only, uh, the only result I was, uh, the only response I was going to get, I decided to stop working on the project and to focus on something that would be a little more useful to people. Uh, 
This was on the 12th of August. Uh, this was the second Wednesday of August, and the second Wednesday of every month is when the Paris Pro-mongers have their meeting. So on that evening, I went to the meeting. Uh, we started talking pro, which is what we usually do at the Pro-mongers meeting. <coughs> and I told them this story, and uh, all the Pro-mongers who were at the meeting told me this is a great idea. You should keep working on it, and you should uh, take all the Bugzilla bits and stick them in a Bugzilla module, and so that people can reuse this not only for Bugzilla but for other applications as well. Uh, so I did. Well, I, I, I continued working on it. Uh, then I realized that the first thing I had to do was uh, download 200 versions of Bugzilla and install all of them, install each one to the point where I had the database uh, set up, run the dbic dump script uh, I showed you, <coughs> so that I could get the corresponding schema object. That took two evenings. Um, it, it started getting problematic when you start going back to Bugzilla 2.0 something, uh, the Bugzilla 2 versions, which all go back to 2002, 2001, which rely on the pro modules that existed back then and don't actually exist now. Uh, so I asked uh, the pro mongers for a little help, and uh, basically we dumped every single uh, version of Bugzilla, well, the schema for every single version of Bugzilla. You end up with a lot of modules, <laughs> in, in this case, a lot of uh, schema objects, and most of them are identical bec because the stable versions of Bugzilla don't change the, the database schema. Uh, so basically you end up with a, a bunch of near identical schemas. Thankfully, DBIX uh, class comes with DBIX class schema diff, which uh, tells you if two schemas are the same or different. So I made a list of 200 uh, schemas, ran, ran them through diff, and removed uh, one of the two if the, the two were identical. You then end up with 26 uh, schema objects, which represent each of the database schemas that Bugzilla went through during its uh, lifetime. Uh, then you get around to writing code, uh, which actually turns out not to be a whole lot of code because most of it has been auto-generated by DBIX uh, class. So there's a schema PSG, G, PSGI file, which is what I use to run a uh, plaque, and which is really about five lines of code. Uh, there's a schema module, which is mostly routing, and there's a schema Bugzilla module, which uh, basically does the mapping between uh, the version of Bugzilla that the user selected and uh, the version of Bugzilla that first, has, first had the database schema that went with that version. And now uh, I can... Uh, Okay, uh, Claudia? Yep. <laughs> ah, perfect. Thank you. A little bit bigger. Control this. Uh, control. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Good at the back. Perfect. So this is the index page, which right now doesn't have a lot of stuff. <coughs> um, 
over here you have every single version of Bugzilla that has ever been released. Uh, let me go back to the last stable version. So you can choose any version of Bugzilla, press the view schema, and Okay. Ah. Uh, but okay. So you get uh, so you first get a list of all the tables that are in the the schema. Uh, a short introduction, which right now is hard coded, and you get for every single table the the columns, the column type, additional information, uh, constraints like what's the primary key, what are the foreign keys, if any, the, if there are any, and uh, there, there you go. <coughs> there's, there's still work to be done uh, on this. Uh, the first thing, the next thing I want to do is uh, abstract out all the, speci the Bugzilla specific stuff into the schema Bugzilla module. Uh, one of the persons who helped me on uh, this project was uh, Madang who's a, a pro, pro hacker and who wrote schema rock tables, which is on uh, CPEN right now. Uh, because he liked my idea and needed to reuse it for something else. Uh, so once I've abstracted out the Bugzilla specific parts, I'll, I'll, see, I'll go see Matt Dang and see how we can make schema rock tables work with uh, schema and you'll be able to choose between Bugzilla and rack tables and get any version of the schema that goes with any version of rack tables as well. Uh, one thing that Bugzilla schema did uh, was uh, allow you to uh, choose two versions of Bugzilla and uh, show you a diff of the, of the two schemas. If, if they were different. And this is something I haven't added yet, but I'm, I plan to do so, so soon. Because again, this is useful when you're looking at the ver version you currently have, the version you're, you want to update to, <coughs> and you want to see what database changes are going to happen along the way. And if you have any ideas, well, now n now's the time. And uh, shout out to the Paris Portmongers because if if they hadn't uh, convinced me to keep working on the project, I, I wouldn't be here. And you'll be listening to someone more interesting than I am. Uh, Madang dumped all the Bugzilla to something versions. <coughs> I, I I still have no idea how he did it. And uh, the main maintainers of the pro modules I use, uh, Rabashushi, uh, Ilmari, and uh, Miyagawa, who wrote, who maintain all, all, the, all the modules and on all the contributors who worked on them. You have two minutes. Jeff. It's a great technical achievement. <laughs> <laughs> what is it useful for? Um, the, the point is to document uh, your database schema. Um, at, at work, we still have uh, a lot of uh, applications that have no REST API. And basically, we interact with them by um, going through, connecting to their database, and uh, getting SQL, writing SQL queries, and um, so we we kind of need a documentation for the schema, not as we not the one we think we have, but the one we actually have in production. 
So this is why I thought this would be an inter interesting thing to do. Uh, Madang uses it because he writes a uh, Rackman, a pro, mo uh, pro module on CPAN, which interacts with uh, rack tables, and he needed a way to uh, check that his SQL, which versions of rack tables his SQL queries uh, run on, and which ones they don't they don't run on. So this is why he did uh, schema rack tables. So. The diff I can see might be more useful. That's definitely worth adding. Mm -hmm. What you could add, I don't know how hard this would be, was you give it a thing of SQL and it figures out what's a table name and what's a column name in the SQL and just says, yes, this SQL will run against this. Oh. Or, no, this SQL will not because it mentions this table name that doesn't. I mean, obviously, you don't have to run it. So you wouldn't need a full kind of SQL engine. It's something that could take an SQL statement and break it down. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that DB, DBIX uh, class can do that out of the box. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry, we need to wrap it up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.